resurrection travels with him, inseparable, inseparable from him. He comes with it. He's equipped with it. It's available to all he comes in contact with, all who come in contact with him. I believe today that the story of Luke chapter 7, now in week 3, never more than a touch point have I even began to look at the message notes because the Lord keeps dropping something fresh. I've got notes for today that are handwritten because the Lord was giving me insight and information this morning over my coffee cup with a notepad in hand. I want the fresh word of God. I don't want, I listen, it's nothing wrong at all with ever preparing a word. We need to do the best we can. But given a choice between what's been prepared and what the Lord has prepared for us, I'm going to take the latter. I'm going to take the, uh, the, the, the latter. I'm going to take the one God has for us right now. I believe that we are in a season of reclamation. People are reclaiming their previous practices, reclaiming their previous places, reclaiming their, their, their previous posture in the world. And I believe that it's important for us to reclaim because Luke chapter 7, the story of the widow's son from Nain that was raised to life is a story of reclamation. It's a story of reclaiming something that was gone, something that had been lost, something that had died, something that had changed in the course of how that family was identified and how it flowed and would flow from there on. I believe that the Spirit of God is always at work in our midst, attempting to bring life where death reigns. I believe that the Spirit of God is always helping us to re see restoration and reclamation in areas of need in our life. I don't have time to delve deeply into the details, but here's what I know. With this young man gone, this woman who had already suffered the weight of now being a widow was about to face the rest of her life or at least a portion of her life until something else changed in the absence of any type of covering. And yet here into the setting comes the Lord to provide a covering. Somebody say he's my covering. He's my covering. But let me ask, let me say this as well. He's my recovering. He's my recovering. Because no matter what may have devastated my life, He is the source of my recovery. I may have lost it, but it can be recovered. We have ample stories of Jesus illuminating and illustrating the idea that the lost coin can be found, that the lost sheep can be found, amen? That the lost prodigal son can be found. He is about reclamation. He is about reclaiming. He is about restoring. He is about renewing. He is about all of these things. I want to today to reaffirm the claim of God upon this altar. Amen. I want to reclaim the call and the and the and the intent of God upon this congregation. I want to reclaim and reconnect with the reality of God's call upon our hearts to be a part of a great commission. I want to reclaim today and ask the Lord to bring restoration to the heart of the believer that we might in fact love the Lord, love our neighbor, and love ourselves. Amen. That whatever may have died in us can be revived in us as is necessary. As I look at this story, I can't help but to think about various factors and various elements. And there's a lot that we don't know that is occurring in this setting. We don't know what killed this young man. It could be that his mother's heart is triple grieving because she is a widow with no covering. She is a, she is a mother who's lost a child. I can't, I, I've lost my father, I've lost my brother. But my mother has lost her husband and her sons. And how she continues, she will only lay claim to the fact that her only hope has ever been found in the recovery that the Lord brings. The restoration and the stabilization that comes 
from the Lord. And I like that because in this picture, we see Jesus approach uh, uh, this funeral procession. And at one point, he steals it. And you know what that means to me? He stabilizes a fluid situation that could go either way. When Jesus steps into the scene, he brings change with him. He brings resurrection with him because he is resurrection. He brings love with him because he is love. But he brings stability with him because our God is the God who never changes. Our God is the God who never moves. He never flinches. He sits on the side of the north and no matter what happens around him, there is no shadow of turning in him because he's stable. And when you are being tossed and turned by the waves and the torment of the sea, the one thing that the, the captains would look to before navigational equipment was ever digitized is they would find that one immovable element of the sky, which was the North Star, and they would set their course and compass upon that one immovable object. I'm here today to tell you that the proverb writer and the psalm writer said that he is God who sits on the side of the north. His throne is established and it is never never moved. Amen. And we can look to him in every hour of any situation and we can find him faithful and faithfully remaining stable. And we live in an unstable moment, but I believe that our stability is found in the Lord. I've listened to this side and that side, the left, the right, the blue and the red. And I'm going to tell you, neither one has the answer because the only answer lies in the middle where truth exists without bias. And it's in Christ that we have hope and we have help. Amen. And this situation, this bad situation of Luke chapter 7, verse 11 through 17, this negative time was only able to see hope found when Jesus showed up. Jesus didn't just cross their path willy-nilly. He showed up, the Bible says, met them at the gate. We mentioned it a moment ago, but I guarantee you every one of our lives are continually moving in a direction. And the Lord's desire is to minister to us and meet us at thresholds in our life. At critical times where we could go either direction. And it's in these places, and, and, and we don't have time today to talk about how important the gate of a city was. But a gate is a place where decisions are made. A gate, they would often go there and engage a contract at the gate of the city so that there were witnesses around. I guarantee you that God does what he does so that as many as possibly can will see that there is only one God in heaven and Yeshua is his name. Amen. Emmanuel is among with us. Amen. And the spirit of God now dwells in us. Amen. And the Lord met them at the gate and it was at that gate that things began to change. It was at that gate. When they stopped, when they, when they somehow took upon themselves and, and a recognition that we're not given clue to, Jesus came in and he stilled the funeral buyer and they stopped. They didn't say, you're a nuisance, you're, a, you're, you're interrupting our plans. They stopped. And one of the greatest pieces of counsel that I could ever give you as a pastor is that when Jesus wants to attend your funeral, you let him. When Jesus wants to stop your parade, you let him. Let is a big three-letter word. It means to allow by permission. God said, let there be light. Amen. And everything in the world as we've seen it bowed down to his authority and they yielded to his authority by permission. You, whatever you say, God will do. Amen. And I like it. I like when, 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 when Mary was introducing Jesus to us as the reader in his first miracle at the wedding of Cana. He said, whatever she said, whatever he says to you, do it. And I guarantee you that the wisdom of the council is found in allowing the spirit of the Lord to direct our lives. He started by stopping. Amen. He started them by stopping them and halting them. I'm telling you, there's a time when the Lord will want wants to arrest anything that's leading you to a place of finality. If you are on the road to making some decisions that are going to impact the rest of your life or the rest of your history, you need to halt and let God address your matters.
Do you hear me today? So many times we have an idea that, that, well, this is what needs to be done. And I understand we need to do what we know needs to be done until we get changed by an alternative uh, uh, solution or opportunity. But we also need to recognize that God needs to have the final word in anything that we're about to do. That our lives and its progression matters. And it matters that we let the Lord speak and that we let the Lord address. And what we don't know is what we don't know. We don't know what brought this young man to death. I believe that we know in John chapter 11 that Lazarus was sick nigh unto death. So there was a sickness that took him to the place of death. But Jesus utilized his authority and spoke dominion over death in that situation. But what we don't know about this one is what took this young child down. Could it be that his mom's sorrow is triplicated? She's lost a son. She's lost a covering. But maybe she lost that son to some bad decisions that son was making about his life. Maybe, maybe he, he died of a drug overdose. Maybe he was murdered in a, in a deal gone bad. Maybe he was robbed and it was a situation where his life was taken from him in all of its innocence by other people. And now not only did she have to bury her son, but she might have to bury uh, uh, the, the necessity uh, to, to uh, she may be burying in her heart the, the willfulness to even forgive. So now she may have a compounded problem because she's burying a son, but she has to live with unforgiveness. Do you hear me? Uh, what I'm saying is there are a lot of things that can kill us. And there are maybe a lot of reasons for us to be bitter and angry and sorrowful and have no hope. But Jesus changes all that. Jesus can come into any situation, scenario, or setting and bring what he brings to the table, or in this case, the, 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 the funeral procession. And he can bring life, he can bring change, and he can, bring, he can alter the outcome. Somebody say, alter the outcome. And that's what I love about the Lord we serve. I believe God is able to alter the outcome. No matter where you may be right this minute, if you will allow the Spirit of the Lord to speak to it, allow Jesus to address it, God can change it. Amen. No matter what may have caused your sorrow, the Lord can heal it. Amen. And, and no matter what may have caused your heart to ache, the Lord can heal that too. There is so much happening in this picture because when Jesus speaks to this and, 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 and the message that I hastily tried to write out in response to the direction I sensed from the Spirit is that Jesus can revive us. And I believe that today. I believe that Jesus. So I, I just declare revival in these altars. I declare revival in these, in this, in this, in these pews. I declare revival in this house. I, I declare revival in our community. But more so, the greatest link between this house and that community is your heart. And I declare revival in your heart. But that's only something you can allow the Lord to stop you in. That's the, that's, I can declare it all day. I can want it all day. But it will only be you who makes the decision. Will you stop and allow the Lord to address that which is dead in your life? Do you hear me today? This is a pastor crying out to his congregation, crying out and hearing the sound of his own voice, knowing it applies to me as well. Will you let the Lord speak to whatever's dead in you today so that he can return it to you? And I want you to say that with me, the word return. Say that with me, return. Let's say it one more time, return. You know what? Think about the word return. Return means that it turned one way, and now the Lord is returning it another way. What has turned in your life? What has turned in your setting? The Lord can return that in a direction that adds to it life and health and wholeness. Amen. It may have, your life may have turned one way, but the Lord can return it another way. And I'm thankful for that today because what this woman thought she had lost, Jesus had come by to restore. Jesus had come by to return, not to return it to whatever status it existed in that led to death before, 
If this child was shot in a drive-by or this child was killed by his own hand or this chi- this child had, had, had died from some other nefarious means or illness, he wasn't returning it back to that. He was returning it back to life. Life in its purity, life in its, uh, uh, its clarity, life in all that offered and promised hope with it. I'm here today to say that I believe that the Spirit of God is able to do more than we can imagine because who would have imagined starting that day carrying that corpse that you would have gone home arm in arm with that same child you were ready to release. I'm telling you today, I wish, I wish that the Spirit of God would say by prophetic utterance and, and, and unction that this is a story of America, that somehow America is going to be revived and returned to the mothers of its own history. And I, but I'm going to tell you something today. I haven't heard that word. doesn't mean it won't happen. But what needs to happen in spite of whatever happens in our nation, whatever happens in our world, is that we are not dead to the Lord. We might be dead when He first approaches us, but we need to be alive when He leaves. Amen? We need not let the presence of the Lord make contact with our progression and possession and pro- and, 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 and procession and leave the same way we came. I'm telling you today, the church doesn't exist for us to religiously go through the form of simply nodding Jesus while we're carrying dead people to the cemetery. We need to recognize that everything we do, every facet of our life is dependent upon the entrance of the Lord at the gate of our heart so that He can have access to everything in us. Amen and amen. By stopping that progression and that procession, He was having, the mother was giving Him access to everything because her everything depended on what He would do next. Do you hear me today? I don't mean do you hear my voice. Do you hear the utterance of the Spirit today? When we allow the Lord to address our situation, when we stop, when we pause, when we, when we, when we let Him speak, He didn't deride her. He didn't bring up all of the past and anything. Listen, we've all got stuff none of us would like to see under a microscope. Every one of us have stuff we wish God would never have to make eye contact with. But that's the beauty of grace. Because grace enables Him to love us and have relationship with us in spite of what we aren't. And grace enables Him to stop at an unknown uh, uh, funeral procession. Nothing about this scenario reveals to us anybody recognized Him, knew Him personally. Jesus stopped at random in this situation and began to address a matter. And I'm going to tell you something today, whether you like to believe it or not, and I'm sure it doesn't matter to you in the sense that you don't mind it, that God is at work in the lives of unbelievers to draw them to Him. Do you understand something? God is gracious even to those who yet to have faith. God is moving kindness towards people who have yet to meet Him. Because he wants to reveal himself to them. I'm thankful today that God is able to reach into the lives of people. But listen to me. That doesn't mean that we sit in the pew, celebrate God, and let him do the hard labor. No man can call him Lord but by the Spirit. But you and I have a responsibility. You know what? You and I are are like those people carrying that dead body in some respect. And we need to let the Lord address our matters. We need to let the Lord speak to us today. Because when he does, he gives us something to say. Jesus speaks first, and we speak afterwards. Do you hear me today? He spoke first, and then the boy raised up and began to speak. And then we see, that was verse 15. and verse 17, we see that after that, the people went out and began to speak. Do you understand? That Jesus is the seed of everything good. Jesus is the seed of everything that has life. Jesus spoke. He was that seed. He spoke life. That boy got up. What do you think he got to talking about? Man, you ought to see what I saw. When I, he began to speak life. He's a, his speaking began to reveal that he's alive. Amen. He didn't just get up like some zombie. He spoke. Why? Because the Lord doesn't just heal you a little bit. He heals you all the way. We just read in verses 1 through 10, the latter part in verse 10 said that the servant of the centurion was made whole. W-H-O-L-E. Amen. 
The enemy would like to push you in a hole, H-O-L-E. He would love to push you into the grave, which is a hole, H-O-L-E. But Jesus wants to lift you up and make you whole, W-H-O-L-E. Amen. That's the Jesus we serve. That's the God we serve. And the Lord is after our best. Because good enough is not good enough. He wants our best. You don't bring a lamb from the offering that's good enough. You bring the best according to the Word of God. You don't just offer to the Lord any old thing you grab along the way. You've got to search through and allow that that to be given to God. Our death serves no real honor to God if we die with dishonor, so to speak. But our life can be lived to the glory and honor of God so that when we pass, we leave a legacy of His glory and honor. I love the fact that that this is a a child in this situation because to me it speaks of the fact that there's longevity beyond what happens in the now. And we have to live with a bigger picture of the future, not just the now. Amen. I love the fact that the Word employs in our understanding of a lot of the functions and facilitation of God and His work among people, He will incorporate that other three-letter word, now. He loves the word let. Let is a word of permission. Now is an operative action word that means that it's occurring in the moment, not something from yesterday, not something about tomorrow, but God works in the now. So whatever it is that your now involves, Jesus is here. This is not philosophical or spiritual, it's real. The Lord is able to minister to your need. The Lord is able to revive whatever has died. The Lord is able to return whatever has been lost. The Lord is able to rescue whatever has drifted. The Lord is able to resuscitate whatever has quit breathing. The Lord is able to return, return. Say that with me again, return. It means it may have turned one way, but the Lord can return it another way. Amen. The prodigal son left, but he did what? He returned, right? And the the coin was lost, but it was found, so it was returned. Amen. And the sheep was lost, but the shepherd sought it out, and it was found, and it was returned returned to the flock. So no matter what your situation has turned into, God can return it to a place of life and vitality and help and hope. I want the Lord to return, not to the time of leave it to Beaver and Andy Griffith, even though none of those are lacking in any desire and, and admirability. I'd love a simple, peaceful time. What the Lord can, redu- can do for us is return to us life in the, in the shadow of death. No matter what has occurred, no matter where we may be as a nation in our own history, the Lord is able to return. What does the church need to return to? A place of vitality in the community where we are allowing the Spirit of the Lord to flow through us as vessels that we are operating inward to care for those that are a part of our canopy of covering, and we are also concerning ourselves with the needs found outside of our four walls. Do you hear me today? The church needs to be returned to life. We need babies crying in these altars in new birth. We need, deli- we, 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 we need, we need postnatal care given to disciples as they're being nurtured and suckled on the Word of God. We need a return to a place where we are not simply doing things for our own benefit, but we are giving ourselves fully to God. I can't look in the book of Acts and not stop at the, at, at the, at the portion of the museum that reveals the story of Stephen, a man full of the Holy Ghost, who didn't say, give me a platform and a microphone so, and, a, and a camera so everybody can see how great I am. We see, we get a glimpse into Stephen's life, a man so full of the anointing of God that when people heard him preach, they clasped their ears and gnashed on him, and the only thing they wanted to do was silence him. Can I tell you today that the enemy wants to silence the anointing in your life? As a matter of fact, he-
He wants to kill the anointing in your life. He wants to kill you so dead that there are, that, that, that the angels of heaven, if you will, are weeping over the loss of what could be a voice in the world today. The enemy would love to silence you, but here's Stephen. Rather than being the spotlight and the limelight in everybody's life, he's out washing down tables. He, he, he's he's COVID-19 proofing them so that other people can sit down and eat. Yet when he speaks, there's such an anointing upon him. Can I tell you, there's an anointing to publicly declare, but there's an anointing upon each of us to live out the life of Christ, to give out the love of Christ, and to be about the business of lifting Christ. Amen? And that's what Stephen did. And it cost him his life. We need to return to a place where our life is not ours. <laughs> Monday. But we don't get to do what we want for what we want. We do what He wants for what He needs and desires. And not just what He needs and desires, but what the world needs and desires. Stephen was serving, cleaning tables. Why? So people could sit down and eat and feed their human need. There's a burden that we need to return to. That means we've turned away from it, but we need to allow the Spirit of the Lord to return it so that it's facing the right direction. Listen, do you understand something? They were heading this way to the, to the, funeral, to the cemetery, but the Lord returned them. And instead of heading to the cemetery, they headed to, He was heading back to His own home. Things had changed, and only the Lord can bring about the change that's needed. We don't know what killed this young man, but I assure you, when he was raised to life, that didn't have power over him anymore. Do you understand that? That when you come back to life under the canopy of God's calling you back to life, you don't reclaim where you started from right before you died. You come back in a wholeness that only God can provide. And I believe that today. I want you to stand with me to your feet and I may want us to worship go ahead and sing some worship here in a minute we won't broadcast that but I want us today to allow the spirit of the Lord to speak to our heart and our life I want your faith today to be energized Do you know why it's important to let Jesus speak because the word of God it is revealed to us that the word of God is alive right and the Word of God is also powerful. Amen? And the L Word of God, listen to me now, here's what Scripture says about it. It is able to quicken your mortal body. That means give life to your dead body. Amen? It's important to let Jesus speak because His words bring life. His words bring light. He was in darkness, but he changed that. He returned him to light. It brings lift. The Bible says, I think it's important. The young man sat up. The Lord is able to lift us. Out of whatever may have killed us, God can change us. And the Lord can return us to where we were living and functioning again. Can you hear me? Listen to me. Listen to me. The Spirit of God wants us to not only live but to function in the roles that we're called to, in the places of authority that we're made to operate in. This young man, I said it last week, and I'll say it again. We see that she, he was her only son. Doesn't mean that this was her only child. She may have had other mouths to feed, other things to think about. God cares, listen to me, God cares about every facet of your life. God cares about what's in your cupboard. God cares about what's in your bank account. God cares about what's in your car and all the above. Amen. There's nothing that you face a dilemma in that God isn't concerned about. But we have to stop and let him address it. If all we ever do, Roberto, is move forward in our own plans and never let God address them. Do you understand why prayer is important? Why do I pray every day? I just say the same things because prayer makes you attentive to the voice of God so that you have opportunity to respond in obedience as you sense the Lord say, stop. Do you hear me? Prayer makes us in connection, in contact, in conversation with the Lord 
so that he can speak to our lives. I believe that the Lord wants to return what you've lost. I believe if it's good for you. We don't see him stop every funeral. We don't see him do. Jesus was not a community crusader. He wasn't about just helping people, making them feel good. He was out to glorify his father. And the things we see recorded are recorded for our example so that we understand the character and nature of God, how he functions, and what our faith can rest in. And part of what we see in this matter is the Lord returning to her what she had lost. What we see in this matter is the Lord showing forth his authority over death so that nothing is ever final if the Lord says it's not done. Amen? And then thirdly, we see that God has the opportunity. When God has the opportunity to speak, he can do miraculous things. Somebody say miracle. God works miracles. That has not ceased. Don't ever buy into anybody's lie that will tell you that miracles have ceased. Miracles are the operation of God in a supernatural manner to exist and resist all boundaries set by the natural world. Amen. God works in the realm of the supernatural. I have seen God return stuff that I know is lost. I've seen it. We've seen it. Testimony. Precious things that got out of our grip and the Lord returned them. And I guarantee you beyond a shadow of a doubt, He did it in a supernatural miracle way. I'm saying today that God cares. God concerns Himself with us. And God is willing to involve and invest Himself in our needs. Whatever situation may have killed you, God wants to raise you. Whatever situation may have devastated you, God wants to reverse that and give you back hope and help again. Amen. And just like he did in this situation, I believe that the Lord is willing to show forth supernatural power to make certain that the outcome is consistent with his plans for your life. Let us not be settled in simply putting to rest some things that have possibly brought heartache and harm and hurt to our hearts, but let us let the Lord address them. Let us believe today that revival is ours, that the Lord deliver. Let me, can I tell you what revival, what you can't do to get revival? You can't whip revival up. No matter how many good songs you sing, no matter how many great preachers you bring, you can't whip revival into place. Revival is received from the hand of the Lord as he delivers it. Now, you can in the, in the covering of those songs and that preaching make decisions in obedience to the Lord. But revival at the end of the day is obedience to the commands of God. And we'll know we are revived when his word is given precedence over everything else. And that's what we see in this story. The word of the Lord had precedence over all other proceedings. And when he was given space to speak, he spoke life. He brought revival and he returned what was lost. I'm telling you today, we serve the same God. We serve the same Jesus. And what he did for this widow at Nain in Luke chapter 7, verses 11 through 17, he'll do for you and I. Will you allow the Spirit of the Lord to reclaim? Listen, I, I symbolically buy oil today, just uh, a re-anointed uh, by significant action, this altar because I'm believing the Lord to return souls and salvation to these altars, not just these, but to the world in general. Hopefully every church prays that prayer. But I want to see people saved, set free, filled with the Holy Spirit, allowing the Spirit of the Lord to address their matters. Revival is corporate. We see, we see it many times magnified on a corporate level, but revival is personal. Will you let the Lord speak to you today? Will you let the Lord raise up anything dead in you to life again. Will you let the Lord, let, let, by permission, in the now, in OW, will you let the Lord revive you, give you what you can't give yourself, and return yourself, ourselves, us collectively, to a place where we are moving in life and light and not death and darkness. Can we make that our prayer today? Make it personal. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to minister to every heart and every life in every way. And God, we ask you to cause restoration to occur in the heart and the life of the believer who will pause and allow you to address their situation. 
God, we pray that you will move through the cloud and the clutter and the darkness and the fog. And God, that you will cut through all of that and by your spirit speak to the heart of the hearer today so that in spite of all the words that have been used and all of the analogies that have been given, God, there is a clear-cut call from your lips to their ears. And God, it speaks to them about revival and returning, resuscitation and reclamation. Father, I pray, let our hearts seek revival. Would you make that your prayer right now? Would you just say, Lord, revive me, O God. Revive me, O God. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. Lord, today in Jesus' name, say it with me. I reclaim life. I reclaim love. I reclaim light. I reclaim lifting. I'm going to be, verse 17, I am going to go out and share firsthand the lifting of Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the prophet among us, the one sent from the Lord. He is Emmanuel. Lord God, revive me. Would you make that your prayer? Lord God, revive me. Restore me. Renew me, God, and return me in the direction that I need to move towards life. Let there be a return, a reclamation, a revival, a revival, a revival, a revival, a revival, Lord, that comes from your hand, that comes by your word, that comes by your power, that comes by your willfulness to get involved in our matters. If the mother is a significant picture of the church, let this offspring be returned with life god let the let the let this offspring be returned with life and vitality god and let it signify the revival of a generation and a restoration of what's been lost father we release everything that is a part of our past and can hold us back if we allow it. Whatever brought us to this death, we turn our back on it so that we might fully embrace the life that Christ brings, gives, bestows, releases, and provides. Let the Lord be glorified. Let every knee bow and every tongue confess His greatness, His divinity, His authority, and His domain. Let the winds of revival blow across the face of the landscape of our heart and our church. And let it remove the chaff that may have built up over time so that the pure seed remains so that a harvest can come. Lord, reduce the weight of all things unnecessary, that we might be lean, and that we might be strong, and that we might have vitality to lay hold and grasp that which is ahead of us. Father God, we make ourselves available to your voice. Declare revival today. Declare return today. Return, God, return, return us, return us, return us. No longer facing the cemetery, let us go home and continue on until the day that this whole thing is over. Father, we love you today. We make access, we make available ourselves, giving access to yourself that you may say, speak, and do in our midst as you would say, speak, or do in our midst. And God, today we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can you give him praise in this house today? Amen and amen and amen. I want, I want our worship team to come. I want us today. Well, I don't, what time is it? Somebody tell me what time it is.